stay with me. Oh, good morning. good morning. And welcome to our Sunday service at Yoker Evangelical Church. Uh, whether you've joined us in person and you're here in the building, or you're sitting at home watching this on a screen, or whether you're listening to this later on over the phone, We're delighted that you've joined us this morning as we seek to praise God. So as we begin, let's start by praying to the God that we praise. God of grace, teach us what it means to be loved by you, to be saved by Jesus, to be changed by the Holy Spirit, to be upheld by your care. We pray that you would be with us this morning. Let us feel your care for us. Lord, we ask that you would do for us what we cannot do, that you would open our ears to hear your truth. And Lord, we ask that we would not just know that truth, but love it, that in our hearts, our deepest desire would be to know more of you. God of grace, in a world full of voices, help us to listen to you. Lead us by your Spirit, we pray. Amen. Well, the regular activities of church are still on hold, but you're all very welcome to join us at our Zoom prayer meeting this Wednesday night at 7.30. The login details are the same for any of the church meetings that we've had. But if you need them again, just chat to me or Greg and we'll be very happy to give you those for Wednesday. So that's 7.30, our prayer meeting where we gather together to pray to God. We're now going to have our reading for today. So if you've brought a Bible with you, can I invite you to turn to 1 John? We're continuing our series looking at this book. And we're in chapter 4, reading verses 1 to 6. So if you've got a Bible on you or if you've got one on your phone... Can I invite you now to turn to 1 John chapter 4. Just wait for the happy sound of rustling to stop. 1 John chapter 4, starting with verse 1. Dear friends, do not believe every spirit, but test the spirits to see whether they are from God. Because many false prophets have gone out into the world. This is how you can recognize the Spirit of God. Every spirit that acknowledges that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is from God. But every spirit that does not acknowledge Jesus is not from God. This is the spirit of the Antichrist, which you have heard is coming and even now is already in the world. You, dear children, are from God and have overcome them because the one who is in you is greater than the one who is in the world. They are from the world and therefore speak from the viewpoint of the world and the world listens to them. We are from God and whoever knows God listens to us but whoever is not from God does not listen to us. This is how we recognize the spirit of truth and the spirit of falsehood. Amen. Well, in a minute, we'll continue looking at that passage. Uh, But first, we haven't been able to sing now in person for several months. And even as we have met together, we still haven't been able to sing. We're going to try something just now that isn't quite singing, but it does involve all of us speaking together. So as you came in this morning, you should have had a copy of Psalm 23, on your seat. Uh, Now this isn't uh, as we find it in the Bible, this is Psalm 23 written to a kind of rhythm, a tune, so that as we say it together, hopefully it'll sound better. Sometimes when you say things together that don't have a rhythm, it just turns into everybody going, nah, 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 nah. Well, hopefully as we have a tune to it, or a rhythm, that'll help us to say it together and appreciate the words. So if you're able, can I invite you to stand just now and keeping your mask on, we're going to try and say this psalm together. The Lord is my shepherd, no want shall I know. 
He makes me lie down where the green pastures grow. He leads me to rest where the calm waters flow. My wandering steps he brings back to his way in straight paths of righteousness making me stay and this he has done his great name to display though i walk in death's valley where darkness is near because you are with me no evil i'll fear your rod and your staff bring me comfort and cheer in the sight of my enemies a table you spread the oil of rejoicing you pour on my head my cup overflows and i'm graciously fed so surely your covenant mercy and grace will follow me closely in all of my ways i will dwell in the house of the lord all my days that was fantastic thank you please take your seats um, it's not quite singing, but it is lovely just to raise our voices together in praise and to use the Bible to do it. I want to start this morning by asking you, who are you listening to? And now, not just now, you're hopefully listening to me, but in life, who are you listening to? You see, as we go through our day-to-day -day lives, there are hundreds of of voices competing for our attention and all these voices will be telling us different things trying to tell us that their way is the right way to go and so at the moment you might have a government that tells you to stay indoors but you'll have friends who want to meet up you'll have family wanting you to see them more generally you'll have TV telling you how to behave Newspapers telling you something else. Books giving you one point of view. Your neighbours telling you something else. And the thousands of voices that are on the internet telling you all kinds of things. In life, with all these voices going on, we all have to make decisions about who to listen to. Which voices we will decide to follow. And can I tell you, this problem it's even more difficult for Christians. Uh, people saved by grace have an even harder time. As you have preachers telling you one thing, other Christians telling you things. Maybe friends who sometimes make fun of your beliefs. Maybe some of us have family who tell us not to take the God bothering too seriously. Then you might find Christians on TV and online who seem to be saying something completely different. How can we know who to listen to with, with all these voices going on, all shouting for attention? How can we know who to listen to? Now John warns us about this straight up in verse 1. He says, dear friends, do not believe every spirit. And when he talks about spirits, don't worry, John's not telling us to listen to ghosts. By spirits, he just means voices. The people who are trying to get your attention. Do not believe every spirit, he says, but test the spirits to see whether they are from God. Because many false prophets have gone out into the world. John wakes us up to a harsh reality that, that not everybody who claims to have a message from God is really from God. Not every message that claims to be for your good actually is. He says we need to discern what is good and what is bad. We need a kind of filter to help us work out who to listen to. Because this is true, isn't it? Who we listen to matters. The voices that we choose to listen to and follow, they will shape us. But just as important are the voices that we choose not to follow. It is just as important to know who not to listen to. We need to take in the good, but reject the bad. 
And so in this small section of this book, John wants to help us do that. He wants to give us the tools that we need to tell whether a voice is good or a voice is bad. To help us understand that, I have got this spirit level to help us see whether the spirits are good or the spirits are bad. Uh. (laughs) But just from verse... (laughs) Right, don't... It is a spirit level, but it helps us spot at the end of verse 6, this is how we recognise the spirit of truth and the spirit of falsehood. What does a spirit level do? It tells us whether something is straight or not. So when you are putting up shelves in your house, you use a spirit level to make sure that the shelves are true and good. If you have this right starting point, then the shelves will be good. They'll store your books, your DVDs, your knickknacks. Though if you don't have a spirit level, if you just decide to guess where to put a shelf, your shelves will be bad. They won't store anything. Stuff will start falling off them as soon as you put them up. We need this same kind of tool as we try to tell who to listen to, to tell whether something is good and straight or whether it is crooked. We need a spiritual spirit level. And so John tells us to take our spiritual spirit level and as we receive teaching, as we listen to voices, to hold it against them to see if they are good and true. And the first thing that he tells us will help us see if a voice is good or a voice is bad is by holding it against the truth about Jesus. The truth about Jesus. Now, people will say all sorts of things about Jesus. There is almost no end to the books, articles, sermons, radio programs that you could listen to telling you about what Jesus said and what he did. But verse 6 warns us that some of it will be good and some of it will just be rubbish. Some of it will be in this spirit of truth and some of it will just be nonsense. And so we need to know the truth about Jesus if we are to spot the spirit of truth about him. And we find that Straight in verse 2, where John says this. This is how you can recognize the spirit of God. That is the spirit of truth. Every spirit that acknowledges that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is from God. But every spirit that does not acknowledge Jesus is not from God. The truth that we need to look out for is the truth about Jesus that truth that he came in the flesh to save sinners. And this is a truth that we should immerse ourselves in, that that God himself became human, came and was equipped with armpits, nostrils, hands and feet, so that he could live the perfect life, so that he could die on a cross, lie in the grave for three days and be raised again, And then ascend to heaven. That is the truth that we need to hold all teaching, all voices against. That certain truth about Jesus is the center bubble that we need to look for in teaching. That is how we know that things are true. If at their center, at their start point, they have this. Jesus Christ come in flesh to die for sinners. We cannot put anything else in that central position. If, if we try and build our lives, choose who to listen to based on any other measure, that teaching is bad. If instead of the gospel, our focus was good works, okay, or the work of the Holy Spirit, if they were the center of what we looked at, then that message is bad, it is dangerous, and it sets us up for failure. Like shelves without a level. Now look, those things are good, but they are not the centre that we need. They are not the starting point that we find only in the gospel. 
And so when we're listening to things, to spot the truth, check if the gospel of Jesus is at its heart. But we can also take out our spiritual spirit level and check if what we're hearing matches the teaching of the world. And we're defining the world here as humanity in open rebellion against God, totally set against his ways. The world that says, my thoughts are this and that matters. My needs must be met. Aren't I amazing? The world that says, me, 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 I, 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 now, now, now. That's the picture that we find in verse 5 of some of this false teaching. Just listen to how John describes them. They are from the world and therefore speak from the viewpoint of the world and the world listens to them. So you see, set up against the truth is the world. And John is clear to say if we find Bible teaching that fits with that, if we, if we find Bible teaching that is more focused on our needs than the gospel, actually that Bible teaching is bad. And it doesn't just have to be Bible teaching, people expressly opening up the Bible and saying this is what's true. Any worldview that you can find that says life is all about this, that doesn't put the gospel at the end of that sentence, that is not worth listening to. If it is all about meeting your needs or all about fitting in with the world, then by holding up our spiritual spirit level, we can see that that teaching is bad. And yet, as a side note, let's be clear, that teaching is popular. People love to hear that they are important, that their needs should be met that they deserve to get all the things that they have ever wanted. People love to hear that. And that's why some churches that teach that kind of thing can grow to enormous sizes because the world loves to hear that. People will flock to hear somebody who says, you, you and your thoughts and your wants, they matter and they should be met. At people that teach that, that say that you should be living your best life now, will look attractive to the world. And yet John says, that's rubbish. And so what should we look for instead? If, if we know to watch out for the bad teaching of the world, what should we be looking for in its place? Well, I think John tells us to avoid world-centered preaching and instead look for word-centered preaching. Just look where John goes in verse 6, straight after warning us about the world. He says, we are from God, and whoever knows God listens to us, but whoever is not from God does not listen to us. John shows us where we need to look instead of the world. He says, we, speaking in his authority as an apostle, that is somebody who saw Jesus, traveled with him, heard his speaking, wandered round with him. John speaks in this authority and says, listen to us, listen to these apostles. He also writes as one who was led by the Holy Spirit to write this book. In fact, almost the whole New Testament was written by apostles, people who firsthand saw Jesus. And yet the whole Bible is God-breathed. Every page of Scripture has been given to us by God. He is the one that led the authors to write these things. And so the Bible is from God, so we listen to it. This is ultimately where we get our spirit level from. We know how the, how the bubble is it's about in the middle. How the bubble is in the middle by holding it up against the Bible and seeing if the teaching that we're hearing matches the teaching that we find in the Bible. This is why the Bible should be where we get all our standards, all our beliefs, all our practices from. The Bible should be where we turn to 
for everything in life. So how do we spot the good teaching from the bad? We see if it matches the world or if it matches what the Bible says. Now to some of us, this will seem like a bit much. To some of us, we'll be sitting there going, this, this is all a bit much. I don't know how to tell the good from the bad. That seems too big a task. Or on the other hand, some of us might be sitting there confidently going, I think I know how to do that. I feel pretty sure that I can spot the good from the bad. John wants to give us two reasons. He gives them in verse 4 why we can have confidence as we tell who to listen to. Why if we're nervous we can be sure as we go forwards and why that confidence doesn't come from our own ability to spot the truth. And so just listen to what he says in verse 4 to encourage them. You, dear children, are from God and have overcome them because the one who is in you is greater than the one who is in the world. What is the first encouragement? You, dear children, are from God. You have been given a new identity. You are no longer from the world. You've been given a new origin. You're from God now. Because of Jesus' work on the cross, because of his sacrificial death, you now belong to God, belong to his kingdom. If you're a Christian, your black hat has been taken off and your white hat has been given to you. Remember the hats from a few weeks ago? Good. About half the room nodded there. You're now part of the flock and so you will naturally listen for the truth. Just as we read, Jesus said in John 10 verse 27, My sheep listen to my voice. I know them and they follow me. Your identity in Christ means that you will listen for the truth. But the second reason, there is a second reason why we can have confidence as we look for the truth. You are from God and have overcome them because the one who is in you is greater than the one who is in the world. The one who is in you. We have a helper in this task. God sent his Holy Spirit, the third person of the Trinity, to be with us as Christians, to help us to listen and to obey. As we go out this week and try and tell what voices are good, what voices are bad, remember you don't do it alone. You do it with the help of the Holy Spirit. This is good. It is not all on us. We haven't been left this task alone. Can I say, if we had been, if we didn't have the help of the Holy Spirit, we would fail in this. We wouldn't know who to listen to. We need this one who is greater and stronger than the world. So that though there are dangers and pitfalls, we can have confidence to listen well with our helper. We can have confidence because of our new identity and because of our helper. So, in a world full of voices, how can I be sure that I am listening to the right ones? Well, we listen simply for the truth about Jesus that we find in the Bible. We reject teaching that fits in with sinful thoughts of the world and find that which fits with the Bible. It's a call to apply wisdom, not just to take everything we hear at face value, but to be able to tell the good from the bad. But I'll leave you with this one simple instruction from this passage. If you only hear one thing today, let it be this. And it is vital. Uh, Earlier in the summer, I was on a family holiday down to Galloway. And down there, they've got one of the longest zip lines in the UK. So we did it one day. It was great fun. But as we stood at the top of that hill, looking down this hundreds of feet long cable and looking at all the machinery up above our heads that was somehow attaching us on, and the guy was kind of screwdrivering us in, whatever else, 
making sure we were safe. He said lots of things. But there was one thing that stuck with me as I prepared to go down this zip line. Just hold on to the rope. He said, whatever else you do, just hold on to the rope. It doesn't matter if you forget everything else that you're told at the top of that zip line, just keep holding on. So as I went down that zip line, my knuckles were white clinging onto it. What is the one thing that we need to hear from this passage? It is to listen for the truth about Jesus. Listen for that truth that we find in the Bible. Any teaching that we hear, any voice that is in our life, we hold it up against the spirit level of the truth about Jesus and see how it compares. That is how we tell the good from the bad. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we ask that you would help us to take in your truth. Lord, please give us wisdom to reject the bad, but to love the truth about Jesus. Father, we praise you for Jesus, that he came in the flesh to save sinners just like us. Father, we praise you that it was your plan that he would come to be born as a man, that we might know you. Lord, we ask that this week you would apply this to our hearts. We ask that the helper, your Holy Spirit, would be at work in us to help us listen and obey you. Father, we ask all this in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Well, just as we do every week, as we finish, we're going to listen to a song together. Uh, but we also have some questions to look at as we're doing that. So just as you're listening to this song, ask yourself, who are you listening to? And don't just go with an easy answer. Really ask yourself, in life, who are the voices that you give the most prominence to, that you listen to the most? Really ask yourself, who are you listening to? And then, what is the truth that we need to hear? What is the truth that we need to focus on? And finally, how can we be discerning listeners? As we go away this week, we will hear hundreds of voices telling us all kinds of things. What can we do to be discerning listeners who spot the good and reject the bad? We're going to listen to the song just now, Speak, O Lord.
I'll just remind you that as we're leaving today, um, we're trying to maintain a two metre distance between each other, just for safety at this time. Um, so as you're leaving through the door, please remember that. And the offering, if you'd like to give uh, physically, will be on your right as you're leaving the door. We'll finish with these words from 2 Thessalonians. May our Lord Jesus Christ himself and God our Father, who loved us and by his grace gave us eternal encouragement and good hope, encourage your hearts and strengthen you in every good deed and word. Amen.